Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. Today's movie has been shoved down my throat like it's Max Hardcore's cock skull-fucking an 18-year-old dressed as a baby. So, what's the movie? Well, let's take a look back and find out. As always, I have no idea what this is, so let's check. What is it? Something to see. Oh! Oh yes, oh yes, now we're talking, now we're talking. Well, what the hell are we talking about? Oh my God, I wanna see this so bad. Crimes of Passion by Ken Russell, director of Horror. Kathleen Turner, Anthony Perkins. Oh my God, she looks like a fucking man. She looks like a man. Tim from Bachelor Party looks more feminine than her. And he's always available doing work on BMWs and shit. Listen to this. One of the most profoundly disturbing movies I've ever seen. I didn't know this was a disturbing movie. I thought it was an erotic thriller. You know, after I did horror, everyone started telling me, you have to see this. You have to see Crimes of Passion. Somebody said, oh, you got to see it. I don't want to spoil anything for you. But the uncut version has the nightstick scene in it. Well, that's a spoiler, sir. This movie features a, a truly over-the-top performance by Anthony Perkins. Over the top in the Ken Russell. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I mean, after seeing what he did with Teresa Russell and said, okay, act like this, now go. And approving of that, I can't wait to see this over-the-top shit. One of the most controversial films of the decade? Let's get to it. You guys ready to start? Crimes of Passion? I know I am. Let's do it. Before we start the movie, look at this shirt. What do you think about it? We got some lesbians in the forefront. Oh, and what's this? Right on the nip? On Broadway. I mean, you can hardly even see it. Why wasn't she like, lesbians? But no, she's on Broadway and started rubbing my nip. The menu is Kathleen Turner slutting it up on what looks like a dentist chair. Are we ready? Play. So as the credits were playing, I noticed a name that I wasn't too thrilled about. Annie Potts. You know Annie Potts, that red-headed slut from Breaking the Rules. Oh, I don't want to see her fucking Potts. I don't want to see Annie's Potts. As the credits play, voices can be heard in the background, and what they're saying really sets the tone for the next two hours. I'd rather get fucked by a vibrator than your cock any day. I can fuck any woman I want. I don't even have to make her cup. This is great already. So the movie begins with this guy Bobby sitting in group therapy with all these people who hate their spouses. Now he's freaking out like, my, wa my wife won't fuck me, okay? I said, what the hell am I doing here? And there's Kathleen. This introductory shot is amazing. Oh my God. It was a close up of her face and it backed out. Her legs are like this and somebody's eating her out and she's reciting this thank you speech. Isn't that just so good? She said, would you like to see how I play the flute? And he's holding her and she's like, I'll unzip the case and I'll take it out. She takes out all these musical instruments using a sexual innuendo for each one. She says she fondles her flute. She's a flute fondler. She's down on his crotch and she's rubbing his big erect dick over his pants. So these flute analogies are really working because this guy just came. She wipes the cum off her mouth and tells the guy her name. China Blue. China Blue. Oh, now we're in some Jack Shacks, a peep show. And in one of these little Jack Shacks is Anthony Perkins, who is playing a deranged reverend who's just jacking off watching this sleazy girl dancing around, shaking her shoulders, you know, doing this, just pan down her body, and you see all these Kleenex dropping to the ground. And after he comes, he's so disgusted with himself, he runs out of the sex shop and stands on this little stool and starts preaching to people. And his preaching is kind of an aggressive form of preaching, you know, just kind of screaming. Fucking they piss and they shit like the fucking scum they are. He then stops China, who's walking by him, and says, Do you recognize me? And she says, in perfect Teresa Russell fashion. I never forget a face, especially when I've sat on it. This is like whore. She's horrible. And she's saying it's ridiculously dirty lines. 
She walks away from Anthony, and then we see her being followed by this man, whose face we do not see. There she is walking down the street, real nervous. Now she's running, and she just ran around this corner so dramatically. This chase scene is so bad. With each corner she passes, she braces herself up against the wall, gives the guy a hair turn, flip glance, and then runs on. She's atrocious. Goddamn motherfucking shit! She escapes the man and goes up into her slut pad. Look at the lighting. This throbbing lighting is pretty consistent throughout the whole film. There's a man in her apartment and he attacks her. He throws her down onto the bed and starts to make forced love to her. Turns out that this is just one of her Johns who gets off on rape fantasies, so you tricked us, Ken. The guy says, was I too rough for you? And she replies, don't worry, sweet dick, I'm tough. She just called that man Sweet Dick. Can you believe this dialogue? It's like watching horror. And Kathleen Turner acts exactly like Teresa Russell, attempting the same tough accent. Oh yeah, I forgot. Do you hear that acting? Oh yeah, I forgot. I can't believe Kathleen Turner is so bad. She's so bad. I'm so happy she's so bad. We then see Bobby from the beginning going home to his very unhappy wife. Oh, it's Annie Potts! And she's very unhappy. These two hate each other, and you know, I hate them when they're together because it's just boring as fucking shitballs, and I'm not a fan of that Annie fucking Potts. She is just a tired old cunt. The next day, we see China, who is out of her slut gear and dressed as a businesswoman named Joanna. Turns out that she's a high society, high fashion designer working in the corporate world. Her competitor hires Bobby to keep an eye on her because he has a feeling she's up to no good. She must be hiding something. So Bobby follows her to her mansion and he sits out in his car and watches. He got out of his car to piss, and as he's peeing, she's walking out. And she has her blonde wig on, she just put a scarf on. I'm quite a mime, did you see that? I actually do have some experience with mime. In ninth grade, I was in this state speech competition, you know, where they have like debate and one act plays, and I was in group mime. Did you know that mime is involved with those little state competitions? Anyway, the goal is to move on to all state, but our act was so fucking stupid. The premise of our act was that there was an MC auditioning three mimes for some sort of show. So the first one was like an acrobat. The second one was a bad mime. So stupid. And the third one was, I'll be a dancer. You know, and each one had a little talent. Well, I was the dancer. Well, I didn't tell him what kind of dancer I was gonna be. But during rehearsal, I'd always freeze up and I couldn't do it. You know, I'd be like, I'm gonna do this dance and I'd get so embarrassed. I just, I couldn't, I, I couldn't. I'd try and then I'd stop and they'd be like, Tanner, come on, do it. And I'd try it again and I just, I could, I just, I couldn't do it until the moment when I had to do it. On stage, in front of the judge and the audience, you know, I couldn't choke then. I had to do it. So I did. And it was glorious. I did the showgirls dance and I got down and started fucking the ground. It was so, so slutty. I mean, we're talking like body rubs and crotch grabbing and I mean, just, I'm. Mean, it was filthy. And nobody had seen it yet. It was great. Can you imagine seeing a 15 year old mime doing dirty, dirty shit? It must have looked so bizarre. I mean, it must have looked a little like this. <laughs> advanced. But then, when we did, I had to change it. The teacher was like, Tanner, that was too much. What were you thinking? What the hell did you just do? And I said, well, you know, I kind of fucked a lot of things. Why weren't? Did, why didn't you ever show us that in class? Because, I mean, I was like fucking the ground and just, I was just this dirty mime. A sexual mime. 
So the bitch made me change my fucking act. She was like, it was too much, you're gonna have to think of something else. Be a, be a juggler who drops his balls. So I went from a dirty mime to a juggler who's auditioning for this thing. I don't know what it is we're all trying out for, but there's a stupid MC going around. You know, and each one's doing their little bit. Then I had to be a juggler. So I was a juggler trying out for this shit. What kind of show is this? So needless to say, we didn't advance, but I think we would have if she would have let me continue to flaunt my adolescent sexuality. Anyway, she picked up Anthony Perkins, and he's saying weird shit. What do you want? He says, I want to save you, child. And she says, Why don't you fuck me? That'll save me. I'm fit as a fiddle. I'm ready for cock. During this encounter, Bobby watches from the window. I'm the messenger of God, you little cocksucker! Oh, what's this, your mailbag? Let's see what's in it. No! She starts going through his bag, and inside is all sorts of kinky shit, including... An auto suck, and it swallows. This one. So what else he got in this bag? And she's looking, and she just pulled out... What the hell? A big steel vibrator with a pointed tip. <laughs> a knife vibrator. What are you gonna do? Fuck someone to death? I wanna take quotes from this movie and put them on a t-shirt with her face on it. You gonna fuck somebody to death? She returns to her mansion and outside. Anthony Perkins is outside her house. He said I wanna cut off her little tits. The next night, Bobby summons up the courage to go to her fuck pad. So the detective is at her house saying, can I come in and fuck ya? If I didn't know that was Kathleen Turner, I don't think I'd know it was Kathleen Turner. They lie down on the bed and start to fuck. And there's the Turner tits. She just slid down his body and is pulling off his pants. And she's licking his toe. There's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, after she just peeled off his sock, she's sucking that toe. She's Joe sucking toeing that toe. Toe sucking Joe. Next, it's toe sucking Joe. Gotta stop that, Joe. How many boys, 13, suck their toe? I don't know, Mommy. And how many boys say, Mommy, huh? Like, hey, little chips, well, he's like, suck their toe. How did you get out? I wanna suck toe. <laughs> <laughs> it's sucked, don't you? Mommy! I don't want it. My socks trying to suck my toe. Anyway, back to Crimes of Passion. It just zoomed up to the wall and there's a little peephole and Anthony Perkins is looking in, just going, uh-oh, Kathleen's getting fucked on Broadway. The next night we see her with the preacher once again and he's egging her on with all his babble. So she says, she's like, you want a game? Go sit down. And now she's in a nun suit, singing, marching around on a mattress. This is so good. How have I not seen this? Everything they're saying is so immature, so dirty, and so blunt that it's just ridiculous. It's, it's non-stop. She sucks it, fucks it, picks it up and licks it. She kicks him out and they have a heated argument to the doorway outside. And we move on to the next day where we see Annie Potts bringing down the mood. So they're just fighting. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. We then see the slut from the peep show walking home and Anthony Perkins comes up behind her and kills her with the knife vibrator. What the fuck? And while he's killing her, we see these weird shots of him stabbing a blow-up doll. He's stabbing a blow-up doll in the pussy and it's just, there's blood coming out all over its face and mouth. It is so good, it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Out of many. The doll's face was just dripping blood from like the head and its weird mouth and he was just stabbing it. The next morning we see Joanna in an elevator and behind her are these mannequins. And from behind the mannequins you can see Anthony Perkins peeking out, stroking his little knife vibrator and then he steps out and he scares the shit out of her. The elevator door opened and she, oh, she ran out. So he knows her other identity now. While rubbing the knife vibrator up against his sweaty face he says, the messenger of God shall return. This is really an odd movie. Later in the evening, Kathleen puts on her wig and she's transforming into China Blue, super slut. 
And finally, we've reached the infamous nightstick scene. This cop is walking along and he's got a nightstick. He sees China and they're, they're gonna fuck. And they're fucking. She's got the nightstick. She's pushing it in on his stomach, kind of grinding it around. He's chained up to the bed and she's just fucking him and it's shot from the top. She's just shoving this nightstick into his chest. She's hitting the cop with the nightstick and now it appears that she's shoving it up his ass. But she's going, Argh. she's just fucking him with the nightstick, hard. It's all these quick shots of just his face, the nightstick, her, the nightstick, her, and her. And there you have it. Kathleen Turner just fucked that cop with his nightstick. We then reach the climax of the film. And there's Kathleen at home taking some paintings off the wall. Thrilling stuff. Oh, oh shit. There was a knock at the door, she opened it up and it was Anthony Perkins and he kicked it in and she fell back into a painting and the glass shattered. He said, I'm gonna save you tonight once and for all. He says, we're gonna play one more game. The final game. He has her tied up to this board now. Go fuck yourself. He took out the dildo and he turned it on. He grabbed her and said, strip, bitch. And Bobby's showing up, saving the day. He kicks the door in and sees China sitting there in the darkness. Oh god, I bet it's I bet it's him with her wig on. Yep. And if you wanna know what happens. You're just going to have to see this one for yourself. All right, let's put on the Weekend of Bernie soundtrack. So that was Crimes of Passion. It reminded me of horror, only with way too much family drama. There was too much Annie Potts. So what do I give Crimes of Passion on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a Four. I would give it a five if it wasn't for the Annie Potts scenes. Maybe they extended this a little too much. If you've seen horror, you've probably seen this. If not, see this. And if you haven't seen either of them, see them both. I cannot recommend this enough. See Crimes of Passion. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time. That's a mime getting his dick sucked at a glory hole.